welcome back to Flick Flops, the podcast where we talk about movies that the critics panned, but we want to tell you if they actually land. This week, we take on the 2023 film Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, where Indiana Jones race against time to retrieve a legendary dial that can change the course of history. This movie stars, of course, Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Antonio Banderas, John Reese davies and others. Of course, I think we talked about Mads Mikkelsen. Let's find out if this movie uh, works for us or turn back the dial and watch the other ones. <laughs> it flops for us. <laughs> All right, Andy, what do you think? Indiana Jones 5. This is a uh, kind of a spur of the moment when we both kind of decided to go see this movie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's... I don't, not that we're super trying to be super current and go watch movies that are actually in the theater, but we both were going to go see this movie. So it's like, let's just do a quick review of it. And, uh, you know, A, because we like Indy and B, why not review it? Because we do a review show. So here we are. Um, right. And your experience was with uh, Teresa. Yes. Yeah. Who just, oddly enough, watched her first Indiana Jones film yesterday. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Was so, it was it a good one? Because um, it was Raiders. There's a, okay, so there's because there's a couple nods to it in here. Obviously, I was like, hopefully, you didn't watch the Crystal Skull. No, then then um, it would be. I'm not going to the movies. <laughs> I'm not going to go see this at all. Uh, let's do. Uh, I'll take you. Let's just jump into this. Um, I'll do this. The numbers on this film. So I uh, real quick. Rotten Tomatoes has this at sixty eight. Uh, for the critics and 88 for the fans or the public or whatever, the audience. Um, so it's not really technically a flop. It's considered successful. Uh, yeah, it's, not a, it's not critically rotten as we tend to try to stick to. Right. And, and I'd seen some bad reviews. Like uh, I, I check TMZ on a kind of a daily basis just because I, I like a little bit of gossip in my life. And TMZ had a, a, like a whole article about how this film was flopping in the theaters and not doing well. And I'm like, oh, man. And I think there was a little kind of a, I don't want to say disappointment or dust up, but it, when, it, when they showed it at the Cannes Film Festival, I don't think it got glowing reviews there. Um, yeah. In hindsight, like, I don't, this film isn't made for Cannes, I don't think. You know, that, I feel like those people are a little more uppity. You know, they want, <laughs> they want more art house films, not. Uh, what Spielberg and Lucas, you know, generally put out. So uh, right. I didn't add into any thought or consideration of my world. I just wanted to go see the movie because I love the franchise. So right, yeah. Um, so the best I could do on the budget, uh, and I couldn't confirm these numbers, but what I saw was the budget was about two hundred ninety-five million. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And to date, uh, in the box office, and it was just released. What? Third Friday, right? As as of this recording, it was released June thirtieth. We're recording this on July second. So, uh, domestically it, to date, has made eighty two million. Worldwide, it's made one hundred and fifty two million. It's on so, its way. It, it's on its way. And I, I mean, I, I did some quick research. I mean, the Crystal Skull film made like almost eight hundred million dollars. So. If that movie can make it, this film surely will make that money. I mean, I, it has to, right? I, I mean, I predicted to Teresa. I said, this will be the biggest movie of the summer. But, I, I mean, I could be living in my 1983 in world. <laughs> right. you know? yeah. Yeah. I want it to be the biggest movie of the summer. <laughs> uh, so, this film was uh, written by four people. Uh, James Mangold, who also directed this film. Jez and John Butterworth. And David Kep. Okay. Now, a quick history of these people: uh, Mangold and the two Butter Butterworth brothers have worked together before on Ford versus Ferrari. Um, and I think I, I don't. I think they also worked together on The Edge of Tomorrow, that Tom Cruise flick, which I thought okay. was actually pretty good. Yeah, I like um, that movie. That was one, and not to get off on that tangent, but it was one that I kind of watched on a on a whim and truly. Th found it enjoyable like this movie looked dumb to me and i was like oh, this movie's actually pretty good <laughs> so um M uh, mangold has as a director has directed copland walk the line and ford v ferrari to just name a few so he's got a little bit of um 
he, he's done some good movies as well as I think he did. Uh, he helped direct Crystal Skull with uh, Spielberg. Okay. Now David Kep as a writer, he's got a pretty good pedigree with uh, Jur- the Jurassic Park films. Right. He wrote those. Uh, Panic Room, which I enjoyed. That um, kind of a God, was it the '90s in that film came out. I think so. You, you can you can put something down here at the bottom once I yeah need to do your post. Um, it's- Crystal Skull, but he also did two of my uh, two films that I truly love. Uh, David Kep also wrote Carlito's Way, which is a okay. great Al Pacino film if you're a fan of uh, Al. Ooh-ah! And uh, Angels and Demons. So, okay, this guy's got a pretty good um, writing pedigree. So, as far as that goes, boom. So, that's all I got numbers wise. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Do you want to jump to the ratings and then we can? T- I mean, it's talk hard. About the film. It's hard to talk numbers really with it being that new. So, it's, it, so you know, here in the yeah, budget, and, and really, it's kind of my thing. I know I don't. I kind of threw you on the, under the spotlight there, but uh, no, no, that's cool. Um, I would say a lot of that is probably cgi in this movie uh, uh yes because they made this guy yeah they made this guy look really young <laughs> yeah and i i have to say um and we can get into that if you want but um i i have to say both for the most part pretty impressive I, yeah I agree. there were some i mean there's still that sort of what do they call it uncanny valley feeling where there's still it's still just not perfect yeah. But uh and there's some moments where you can really see it, but for the most part, man, it's like pretty daggone good. I mean, yeah, I mean if, if anybody's it. those of you that are watching, I mean, my image behind me is the younger and older same person. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I looked great to me. I was like, you know, again, I'm a simpleton when I go to films. I just <laughs> truly enjoyed the film. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, All right, let's do this, Gary. Let's get this. Over. Let's go to our ratings. Right to the ratings. And then we can talk. Um, yeah. I'll go first, um, Gary, because we don't have one that says zero poos. I will give it a half. Yeah. Uh, I just truly enjoyed this movie. Uh, I went into it as a fan, so I was a little biased. I just I don't have any reason to, to kind of dump on it. I, it, it was entertaining. It was a little long. If I have to get picky, it seemed it was two hours and 24 minutes. That's a little long for me. Yeah. Yeah. My attention spans, I mean, tends to drift a little. Well, but not I only think, that, but we're older guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah. I mean, look, I had to go to the bathroom. You need a pee break. Like. <laughs> you need some intermission if you're going to go that long. Yeah. So um, uh, if you want to throw your rating out real quick and then we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, no surprise. Um, I too went with half because we don't have a zero. So. Um, yeah. half a TP. Um, uh, I mean, I I enjoyed it. Did I think it was? I mean, my only complaint probably would be a little long. Um, yeah. Uh, I was talking to um our, a mutual friend of ours, Gary Brent, and his he's seen parts of it. Um, what what, what I should say some part he's seen the movie, but his point was is he the girl kind of got annoying to him. Yeah, I didn't get that feeling. I mean, I didn't love her character, but she kind of has a redemption at the end, and you know. But uh, right, yeah. I mean, I yeah. thought the, the it was paced pretty well. It moved well. I, yeah. I love the story. I mean, I don't know if there's what truth is to this whole uh, Archimedes, Archimedes thing. thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not a history guy like that. I, I didn't just look any of that up. <laughs> I just let the movie happen and enjoy right. it. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, again, I think we say this a lot, and critics, I, th- I think they 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 spend so much time trying to be critics and trying to just rip on and crap on films. I mean, I dug up a quote here, a a, a rotten because there wasn't a lot of rotten um, reviews. This one, I I just chuckled at. So I'm gonna give him the credit because he he made a funny little quip. I don't agree with him, but I laughed at him. His name is Sonny Bunch. From uh, something called the Bulwark. I don't know what that it's a is. Happy group of people. Yeah, but this, his a name Sunny is Sunny Bunch. Bunch. <laughs> his only review is Raiders of the Lost IP, intellectual <laughs> property. Yes. I th- I mean I, I enjoy a quick funny pun, so I give the guy credit for that. I don't agree with him. I thought Crystal Skull was was a worse movie. Oh yeah. The series. Yeah. I, I mean, I like I, I went back and looked to see like. Who wrote this? Was it the same writers? Because this movie to me seemed so much better. 
and it was kind of the same. Like, I mean, Kep was involved. I was like, well, I, I don't know. They kind of missed the mark on that one, in my opinion. But this yeah. one, I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there was a point where uh, late in the movie where I thought Indy was going to um, expire. And okay. I thought, well, that's a fitting ending. Um, so uh, I don't know if you, I mean, I'm, you know, I never, I never want to see, I didn't want to see Han Solo die. I don't want to see Indy die. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know they too. will, but I didn't want to yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, again, I don't I'm not giving anything away. You watch yeah, the movie, I was going to say, I, mean. I don't, I don't want to, um, I, I, a few of the things I wrote down, I just don't want to talk too much about because of spoiler. <laughs> yeah. I, because it's so new. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that there was one part that I chuckled at in the movie that nobody else laughed at. And I don't know if they caught it, um, which is kind of sad because to me it was like a flat out, like, good joke. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and mention it because it doesn't give anything away. Yeah. And then, you know, if we want, we could say like a big spoilers alert, give it a pause. You could put something up front. So, even if you watch past this point, there may be spoilers. Yeah, this I don't and, think this is. Um, I, I mean, I I don't think it's a surprise who the villain is in this movie. If you look at the poster, yeah, um, read the uh, the actors. Um, and I like the guy too as the villain. Oh, Mads Mikkelsen is awesome. Love that. I was dude. like, I, I don't know who this guy is, but I love this oh, guy. I mean, great. I completely buy him as a villain. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Um, their altercation at the beginning. Okay. Which um, I will say one one critical thing about the action scenes in this, I felt like those could have been cut down a little bit shorter. Um, I think had the action scenes been just a little cut, that yeah. the movie would have moved at a little bit better pace, um, mm -hmm. and and therefore end it at a two hour mark, which I believe all the other movies are about a two hour movie. Yeah, it gets a little long in the tooth. It's a little long, but that's my, that's. Seriously, pretty much my only real criticism of it. Exactly. Um, uh, there's the, the part where he gets away at the beginning. And when um, Indiana Jones runs into him the next time, he says, I don't you know, your say. face rings a bell. <laughs> yes. I laughed out loud. Nobody else. I don't think anybody else caught no. it. <laughs> and I, and when you said we started with the villain, I was like, I know where he's going because I completely agree. <laughs> It was a funny little one-liner that just yeah. kept moving, and I was like, "That's well done, well yeah. done, sir." I, I thought it, I thought it was funny. Um, I'm a little disappointed with the crowd we were with, um, <laughs> but well, yeah, say, that was a good one. And then I'll say, for the most part, I mean, the movie made me nostalgic. It, it, yes, uh, the Crystal Skulls did not. I wanted that to do that for me. I felt like it missed the mark way too many times in that one and just went, you know, into super crazy town. Not that this doesn't get totally Oh yeah, there's you know off the rails or whatever. Absurdity but, here, but but um it feels like a fitting end, you know, bookend. I feel I feel better looking at if I was looking at a bookcase and had all the movies laid out, I feel better that one being tucked in at the end, you know, than See, well Crystal yeah, well Stone. said. Yes, I agree. And I think your word nostalgic is perfect for this because, you know, it, these films came out, Gary, when we were what? In our, I want to say 82-ish. probably. We were, I mean, we were in our early teens. Yeah. And while, and we've said this before because, you know, those who don't know, Gary and I have played music our whole lives. Um I, I will always contend that music is the ultimate time machine because you can play a song from 1984 and go, oh my God, you know, I mean, you hear uh, 19, you hear, you hear Sister Christian from our beloved Night Ranger, and you can kind of go back to cruising in your car with your buddies. And this film had that same comfortable feeling like that, like you, you found your old varsity jacket or something, you put it on, you're like, oh man, yeah, this feels good. This feels, yeah. I, I like, I like living in this comfortable world. And um, like I said, I was completely surprised that my better half had not seen the Indiana Jones films. And I was like, oh, we can mark off the rest of the day if you want to sit and watch them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> because um, Spielberg created something fantastic with this character. And um, I, I, I love it. And I'm, I'm very happy to visit it again. 
So, and I think you're right. Perfectly said with this is a great book into it. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if they're going to continue on. I think there was some talk early on that they were handing over the, the whip to the, the, the girl. I, I don't see that maybe, but I just don't see it. I don't want to see it happen. I, yeah, I, a, want a, I don't want to see it, but I just don't see it happening. I mean, I liked her and I thought she was great. And I, and I love the whole, like, you know, I went with my daughter, like two of my daughters went and Tara. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, there's there's a very strong woman in the in there too that's kind of doing the whole kind of yeah she was a Indiana badass. Jones thing kind of even a swashbuckler type. Um, I mean, you know, what I would have loved. I didn't interrupt you. I would have loved a moment in the movie for her to go throw me the whip. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. When he says give me, if he would say give me the thing, and she said throw me yeah. the, whip, I would have loved that quick little nod. Again. Yeah. They didn't consult you and I as a writer on this one. Maybe the next one will be on it. They'll go, where's those flick flop guys? They got to have some great ideas. Like, look at them. They can barely talk. Clearly, um, they can't even get to an intro. Um, I will say, yeah. I will say that, um, <laughs> spoiler for the very, very ending. Okay. If you yeah. don't want to hear the very, very ending part, stop now. This is a spoiler. Um, I don't think it's a bad spoiler, but I just want to say the, the ending shot. The zoom yeah. up from the from the street level, and you see the hat hanging on the line. I'm like, hanging the hat up, love it. That's yeah. that's the 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 hat is hung up, yeah. and then right as the lens closes, snatches it back off the line. I was like, yeah, I uh, I like how they're tr- they're leaving it open, but I really hope that this. I I liked. I wish it would have ended on hanging the hat. Honestly, it just that would have been yeah, that would have been a perfect ending. Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe the next adventures are all in our mind, you know, <laughs> they're yeah. not, they don't need to be on film. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to think, Oh, oh so real quick, what so. did, what did the girls think and tell what did Tara think? Um, Teresa liked it. Teresa, Teresa's only response was that's a long movie. That's what that was her said. only complaint, that's, but she is, she enjoyed it. You know, that's what all three of the girls said. I mean, Tara and the two girls, they all, yeah. they all thought it was too long. Now I didn't get a real sense of whether they actually liked it or not. Um, <laughs> Were I, they staring at their phones the whole time? No, no. Um, I, I think maybe we were not in the most comfortable seats. Um, I think Tara was a little restless in her seat. Um, so let me tell you, the theater here I, where I'm at down in Nashville, every seat reclines. Really. Every seat that you completely you lay back and watch the movie. I'm That's like dangerous for me. I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> and and real quick regarding the time, and uh, because this show is going a little long already. While we both have said it's long, it didn't feel long to me in a way. Like I didn't like I wasn't hurried. I I, I love the adventure, and I was mm-hmm. I was into it. But when you walk out, I checked my watch. I'm like, oh wow, we've yeah. been in there for two and a half hours. Yeah, three hours if you count the previews. Well, you know, here's the interesting thing. So this time we went to the local theater, the one right down the street. And normally, okay. we, normally we go out to Milford. Um, we went, we went down the street, um, mostly because of being a longer movie. I want to be closer to home. Yeah. Um, and there were some other errands that the kids were going to run or whatever. But anyway, so we went right down the street and I'm like, I want a clock. Cause I already know it's going to be long. I'm clocking these trailers. Yeah. How much? As soon as they started, I hit play. Here's the thing. Two trailers. Oh, we had more than two. Two trailers. There was a little thing in between them. Six no. minutes. Six minutes, and it was into the movie. And I was like, "Thank you, local theater." Oh yeah, no, <laughs> I was at an AMC. Chain. And let me tell you another thing, real quick, that you you will appreciate. Uh, for the, the people who do not know, the four or five people that are actually watching and paying attention. Uh, my my wife <laughs> is an audiologist. <laughs> Hi, mom. Uh, Hi, dad. Sorry. Uh, 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 the doctor of hearing. <laughs> Do you know how loud the cinema oh, was? Oh, and no. she's like, she goes, what in God's name? Does so I pulled out, we have a decibel meter on my phone. Oh, really? To see how loud it was. It was insane. I mean, I know I'm getting old. I understand that. But I'm like, I don't think it needs to be so loud. Yeah. Like, we're watching the trail for the Expendables 4. And it's just bombs going off. And she's looking at me. She's like, why so loud? I'm like, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Didn't see that trailer, by the way. Oh, he had some great trailers. <laughs> I got a lot of thumbs down from Teresa. She's like, turd, turd, turd. I'm like, I can't wait to see this movie. You're like, I thought you were going to be like, this is our next 
These are keep keep going. Which ones are we ones we're gonna... I told her as we walked out, I said, Hey, let's sneak into another theater. She goes, We're absolutely not doing that. We do not condone sneaking into other theaters. Yes, too. that is not us a good idea. <laughs> All right, Gary, I've got nothing else. Well, was this like the movie this episode has gone too long? Uh, yep. anything else you need to add? Um, nope, nothing. Um I think I covered everything. I'll say Antonio Banderas is in this movie. I didn't catch that for a minute. Briefly. But, it uh, took me a second to grasp. Pants. Like, wait a minute, that's Antonio Banderas. <laughs> you didn't notice everybody's pants went. Never mind. That's a whole. Other thing. <laughs> that's, a whole that's another <laughs> franchise. Ah, well played, <laughs> sir. All right, that's uh, that's our time. We've spent. I'll end it with this. Go see it. This movie is really worth seeing. Go see it. Yes, and uh, be, be prepared for a pee break if you're over fifty. Don't drink anything. <laughs> All right, we're out. See you next time. Bye.